Good evening, folks. Tonight we're going over some things circulating on the internet this week. Two things being said about the ongoing changes with Earth's magnetic field, and they are both very wrong. This is a rough cycle here on Earth. We are due for the next magnetic pole shift, and it's already happening. It's here. We're going to break down exactly why these new claims are wrong, and first, we'll hit the concept that the magnetic pole shift is slowing down. Yeah, like a bullet technically slows down slightly as it penetrates the skin. Does that comfort you? Didn't think so. And of course, what would a debunkeroni be on the magnetic pole shift without Captain Clueless trying to resurrect the powerfully debunked concept that modern magnetic field strength should be a comfort to you? Let's start with some visuals. We'll start with a visual about the magnetic field strength. Vertical axis on the left, time below on the bottom. Field strength is plummeting. Heck, we showed this at the start of the video. But it's not actually linear like this. It's actually staggering oscillating. And while the trend is the excursion and its acceleration, if you happen to pick a year during one of those little up hitches, you could say the field weakening has slowed and give people false comfort. And there's a similar story with the motion of the magnetic poles. That is specifically what was claimed this week, that the motion of the magnetic poles has slowed down after having kicked in their shift and sped up and up. But again, it's not linear. It's like this. So, if you select the right moment, you could say that the field shift just slowed down and then everyone who listens to you thinks the wrong thing. Let's dive deeper with the graphical data on the north magnetic pole so you can see this in action. So let's take the motion from 1904 to 1948, 44 years to traverse across this circle. So, let's see how long it takes to move that same distance by putting those circles side by side. Yeah, no, it's not perfect, but it is close enough. It was 44 years for the first jump, same distance, but only 42 years the next time. Then in 1998, a major acceleration occurred. That's where we went from 5% lost per century to 5% lost a decade. Same jump, but this time only 10 years. The next one, nine years, then seven years. And based on this forecast data, we don't actually have the real data because they haven't given it to us in updated form yet. Yes, this next one should hit the mark next year for a total of 10 years this time. So did it slow down? Maybe, according to this forecast, but that's not reality. And there is no easily linear way to look at this. Just look at the distance between the colored dots, which represent one year. Look how much speeding up and slowing down occurs, even after the official excursion accelerations began. So no, we don't actually have data telling us it has slowed down. They have forecast slowing the last three reports, and it hasn't happened. And even if those weren't true, and we did slow down a bit, it's a bit. It happens because it's not a linear process, and right after every slowdown, we surge into another acceleration. Do you feel comforted? Yeah, me either. Quick shout out for goldobservers.com before we hit the second major topic and Mr. Burns. Gold Co. has sponsored our upcoming documentary. It's going to be the best way to communicate the reality of Earth's disaster cycle to someone, and it's going to cover everything needed to convince anyone. Show your support and catch up with us serious preppers who backstop with precious metals. Goldobservers.com Now we're back to this and oof. Last time I debunked something of his, you guys got very, very angry. So, um, hi Mr. Burns. Hope you're having a nice day. Wish you all of God's best and I'm very sorry for this. His recent video claims we are not in an excursion and he knows that because of how strong the field of Earth is right now about twice as strong as past periods known to have excursions. And I'll show the same graphic I showed all those years ago the first time MIT tried to pull that nonsense on the world. Yeah guys, ignore the cycle, and the pattern, and the changes in the ionosphere and atmosphere and even the Earth rotation speed. We're still way up here. It's fine, right? Mr. Burns uses this graphic in his video. It is severely cherry-picked to show the field strengths that support his position. I've got about 50 papers I could show that don't tell that story so cleanly, but we are playing devil's advocate, so Mr. Burns, you will lead. Bottom panel is really his main point, the dips, where the purple arrows are pointing. That's the excursions he recognizes, and he says, look at how low those are. Today, which is at the far left side of the chart, pretty high. So what if we're declining faster and faster? We're still way up here. Need to get down to those purple arrows, he says. Can observers spot the first fatal flaw? Let me zoom in on the last 100,000 years. 
That is presumably Le Champ there about 40 to 50,000 years ago. So uh, where the duck are the other ones? Does Burns think Le Champ was the only excursion of the last 100,000 years? Observers know better. Here is a list of the most well-studied ones from just the last 60,000 years. And observers, how many times have you seen me point out the unnamed one about 30,000 years ago and how Le Champ was actually two events, one at 48,000 years ago and then another at 42? So having one excursion show up in this very cherry-picked graph not only is factually wrong, but it collapses the premise that this chart tells us about the field strength indicators of excursions. It doesn't. And actually, those humps upward, they don't seem to last very long before dropping back out, do they? Look what we just had over on the left, the hump of the Levantine Iron Age anomaly, and we're heading back down. Heck, just look at the top panel, the blue line. That should show both the Gothenburg event 12,000 years ago and Tianqi 6,000 years ago. Does it really? Eh, maybe a bit. Does it show them to the degree that you would point out a magnetic excursion? No. And that's the problem. Not only does this chart not show pre-excursion strength indications, none in existence do. And that is because it's not a thing. He made it up. MIT tried to pull that on us back in 2015, a decade ago. And it was only after I had made that fun little graphic to be funny and then broken down the details of why that science made absolutely no sense that some of the world's top geophysicists specializing in magnetic pole shifts then published a paper saying that pre-reversal or excursion strength doesn't matter. It's not related to the interval time. Whether it's strong or weak, doesn't matter. When it's time, it's time. And by the way, right now, it's time. Between papers saying the next acceleration could take us to 100 times faster than the current shift, and others suggesting this can happen in a human lifetime, this topic is not something to be so cavalier and incautious with, Mr. Burns. And if you need help with the cycle, the past events, or the evidence of this event happening now from the core of Earth all the way out past Pluto, just let me know. For the rest of you, I'll see you in the morning for the Daily Show. And be safe, everyone.